Greetings folks, Rome21 here and welcome back to another toy review. There's been a lot of talk going on about the recently released X Plus Yuji Sakai 91 Godzilla. Yes, that one. I thought we might take a look at that same monster, but released in a different size. So today, we'll be taking a look at the Bondi Japan 8-inch 1991 Godzilla. This figure was released in 1991 to correspond with the release of the Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah film. There are some other variants and different sizes of this figure, particularly a large scale 14 inch one, and there are two versions of this figure right in front of you, one made in Japan and the other one made in Korea. Even though this toy was released in the early 90s, Bondi really knocked it out of the park with this one. The scaling on the entire body, the individual scales, cover it top to bottom, everywhere. The spines, everything is individually detailed beautifully. It's, it's really amazing to me that they did such a good job and they still only charged $16 for this toy. As I said earlier, there are two releases of this figure. The one before you is the Korean version. So there are some slight differences over the Made in Japan one. Most notably are the darker vinyl color and the extra overspray for the chest area here and on the feet. There are some slight differences to the mold for the face and the tail, how it's turned, as well as in the bottom of the foot it actually says made in Korea as opposed to made in Japan. Speaking of color, it's all done very subtly. It's just a touch of yellow and such for the eyes, some silver as I pointed out for, for the chest and the fins, all the way down the tail, and a little bit on the hands. Nothing too accurate, but it's what you usually get from the 1990s Bondi toys. Articulation is as bad as you would think it is on this toy. This older type of vinyl is very hard compared to the newer figures, and it can make moving some of the joints a bit more difficult. Articulation is essentially the legs, the elbow joint here, head, back of tail, midsection of tail. So it's got a lot of movement, it's just actually getting it to move properly without pulling a leg off or something. So if you are looking for a toy that's a little more fluid in its movement, you probably want to look elsewhere. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah was released in Japan on December 14, 1991, and on home video in the U.S. in 1998. It is the 18th movie in the franchise and the third of the Heisei films. The main theme of the film's plot is time travel. While most of it can be a bit convoluted, I'll give you the short version with as few spoilers as possible. A trio of humans from the future arrive in Japan. They bring promise of saving the country from Godzilla, who is supposed to destroy Japan at some point in the future. The group from the future offers up their saucer-like time machine to go back in time and make it so Godzilla never existed. Of course, these things never go as planned, but you will have to watch the film for yourself to figure it out. It's one of the better of the 1990s Godzilla films. With this toy being 24 years old now, you can imagine there's not a lot of them floating around. Because of this, it's reflected in the price. 
Examples of this toy hover between the $50 and $150 range, with the tagged versions being closer to the top of that. While mine was a gift for my family, I feel $50 bucks is a fair price for a tagless version, and closer to $100 for one with a tag. This is one of my favorite Godzilla figures. It's one of the few versions of Goji ever released with a closed mouth, which is a way that hobbyists actually refer to this toy. Just like the Woo, don't buy this if you want to pose the toy. However, if you just want to own a very solid example of Heisei Godzilla in a great 90s mold by Bondi, then this is your toy. We appreciate you all for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe if you'd like to leave some feedback. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.